We're going to go over what is included when you purchase the new NOS Mini controller and we're going to go over how to quickly set it up and bench test it or dry fire it in the car. So you got the box to start with. You'll have a set of instructions, have a wiring diagram in there, a couple notes and stuff. You have the actual controller itself uh, with a CAN cable, it will plug into the other unit. You have a stylus. We'll come with a controller very similar to the old one. You'll have your place to plug in the uh, touch screen. You'll have a battery ground, your ground for your stage one and stage two. Right here, you're going to have a, uh, a MetroPak connector that can be used for a bottle pressure sensor. You can wire it up yourself or you can buy the one from them. And then you've got the actual main plug that plugs into the harness provided in the box. All right, so let's go over how to use the new NOS Mini progressive controller. So this is what we would do if it is on a bench or if you have it wired in your car and you're just looking to test the solenoids and make sure you've got everything done correctly. So we've got the black wire grounded and we have the white wire going to 12 volts as if it's a 12 volt input. I'm gonna go here in nitrous configuration, system setup. If you're a GM LS car or something like that, you're gonna choose coil per cylinder. And then go back. Stage one, setup. We're gonna choose enabled for a bench test type scenario and just to make sure the solenoids click, we're gonna take the activation RPM all the way down to zero and hit save. We're gonna take the deactivation RPM all the way up to 15,000. Hit save. For the ramp builder, you got your start percentage, your end percentage, what you start at, what you end at, if you want any sort of delay, uh, the total ramp time. So if you want it to be an 80% start, 100% <clears throat> end with a two second ramp time and an eight second stage duration would be kind of like a, a normal or a, a 80% to 100% with no delay at 0.4 ramp time with a six second stage duration. Once it's done, click save, configured. Now when you first start it up, the TPS auto set will not work for most GM applications or new stuff that has an actual uh, wide open throttle or TPS sensor. So you're gonna come down and go to configuration this is where you can change your Hertz. This is where you can change the mode if you want it in resume ramp mode, uh, which is where if you let off and you get back in it, it's gonna pick back up where it left off. And so right here, we're gonna go to TPS, change it from whatever they have it set on to TPS at 90%. That's going to allow, go back, go to setup, and that'll bring you into this TPS auto set mode. So when you come here, you'll take the white and blue wire and hit start. And then if that wire is hooked up, you'll turn your key on, put your gas pedal to the floor. If it's not, you can just touch that wire to 12 volts as if you have a wide open throttle switch. Hit set. Now it's saved. Now we can go back to the home screen and with a key on, you should be able to either put the pedal to the floor or hit your wide open throttle switch. And stage one will show on. I'll give you an example of what that looks like before we set it up. If you come in here, not just configuration, go to stage two and set up. We'll en enable that. This is what it'll look like. TPS auto set not available. Won't be able to click it. When you come in here and go TPS to 90%, go back. Now you have it ready.